What is going on, everyone? Good afternoon, and welcome to a Tuesday, April 9th edition of Establisher Runs NBA Injury Analysis Show. I am Mark Dankenbring, joined as always here by Mike Gallagher, who is doing extra time today as we have a 14 game slate, 14 teams on the front end of a back to back here. So it feels like a Monday, but it is indeed a Tuesday here as we had no games yesterday for the College National Championship, but we are back in full force today. How are you feeling today, Mike, as we embark on this uh, crazy last week of the NBA regular season? I feel great today. I had a really nice off day. Got a big hike in at Tom's Thumb. Got some oysters. Got a nice piece of fish. Uh, hit a little mini golf. Watched the NCAA game. Did a little bit of work. It was a, it was a great day. Got a hike in this morning and a little bit behind. But uh, yeah, buddy. Uh, we got three mega, <laughs> mega slates uh, to get through today. Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. Freaking 14 teams on the front end of a back-to-back. Meaning like we don't know anything about the Wednesday games, so matchups is going to be a struggle to write. Um, it's going to be short for sure, but I'm uh, excited to be sure. This play Glad you had a great off day. Yeah, today should be madness, but also a little bit of fun and hopefully some opportunity for us with so many teams on the slate. Uh, we've got all hands on deck trying to project here. So uh, <laughs> let's get right into it. Help help our subscribers out there get some edge. Uh, all the listeners out there, thanks for tuning in today. Let's start with the first game of the night, Dallas Mavericks at Charlotte Hornets, front end of a back-to-back for both teams here. Maxi Kleba listed questionable with back spasms, and then Derek Lively remains out here, and Josh Green uh, listed doubtful. So upgrade here for Josh Green to doubtful, but big big news here is Derek Lively remains out, and then Maxi Kleba Q here, and planning it's a, a relatively small short uh, Charlotte team. So what are you expecting here from the Mavs and any news on Kleba? Yeah, we've seen Kleba get managed. Uh, he's been dealing with a lot of bumps and bruises. We know that small toe thing really cut him down to start the year. This is a back-to-back. They're at Charlotte today, and then they're flying to Miami tomorrow. So pretty clear to me where you want to play your maxi game if you're going to split them. So kind of think he sits. Uh, that could lead him to play a little bit smaller. We know that the Hornets aren't too big uh, on the wings, you know, with uh, Miles, who's really a, a three, four, you know, so they could certainly play a little bit smaller. So we'll see, obviously a big spread here. Um, would expect to see, we got a little bit light minutes um, for the spread and for the back to back with the tougher game tomorrow. Uh, we know Jason could, if they could afford it, they're going to try to find minutes, man, Luca is hobbling around. Uh, he's been, you know, listed all the time. You saw him miss the game uh, last week. So he could be a little bit like, he'll still be up there, but if they can get a lead, you'd think they're going to want to watch his minutes because they've really been running into the ground. Obviously, Kyrie, fantastic. What, 26-point comeback uh, for them. One of the biggest wins of uh, of the – or not necessarily – one of the most uh, exciting comebacks uh, of the weekend, I should say. But, yeah, um, mostly mostly good to go. But keep an eye on the minute ceilings with the road back-to-back, big spread. And then, um, as I mentioned, I think Maxie's going to sit. We have him in for projections for now, but wouldn't be surprised if they hold him out. Cool. Sounds good. Uh, Mavs currently two games up on the Suns. Uh, Mavs are in the fifth spot. Suns are in the sixth. So, you know, decent here with just a few games left to go this week. On the Hornets side, we have LaMelo Ball, Seth Curry, Cody Martin, and Mark Williams solicited out. Amari Bailey is questionable here, but not in the rotation. So don't really have to worry about that. Uh, but my question for you tonight going against Daniel Gafford and the Mavericks is, do you think the Hornets will start Nick Richards? Uh, he returned last game and came off the bench and they started Grant Williams. So curious your thoughts here on the Hornets starting lineup and any other news and notes you have for Charlotte. Yeah, we're leading Grant a uh, little, little revenge game uh, action here. So I uh, expect the MPJ revenge you mentioned uh, PJ Washington. So we're leaning Grant. Uh, it was a matchup uh, according to Steve Clifford. Sure. Gafford, you know, he's obviously a more rim pressured center, but I don't know. I don't think it really matters just because of how Dallas's offense is going to be run. They're still going to want to be able to switch one through five uh, with Grant. So I think that makes more sense to me. So we're leaning pretty much all the way into it that they're going to start this way. So our projections are have that again, like almost a hundred percent Grant starting. I, th- I think they're going to go that route uh, with Nick coming off an injury as well. So, but yeah, uh, we've seen just mega, mega minutes. The Hornets have been playing pretty close games. So, Maybe they hang around here. Obviously, their offense is a disaster more often than not. Um, you know, did play OKC pretty tough um, overall. But yeah, um, we'll see. Not not too much, uh, but tight rotation and a big spread. So maybe if, if they can hang around, uh, you could get some minutes out of these guys. 
Sweet. So the game number two of the night, Detroit Pistons at Philadelphia 76ers. On the Pistons side, a lot of out tags here as Tosan Awoma, Simon Fontecchio, Quentin Grimes, Isaiah Stewart, Asar Thompson, and Stanley Amude are out. That is a lot of wings and front court players missing for the Pistons. Um, and then Cade, Cade Cunningham is questionable here. So what are your thoughts here on the Pistons rotation and potential starting lineup here who who are missing Tosan, you know, Simone Fontecchio, who have often been starters for them in place of Isaiah Stewart and Asar Thompson. What do you think in the Pistons starting lineup looks like tonight? Yeah, they're not on a back to back, but they certainly could, you know, keep Kate out. We've seen Kate a lot of Q out, Q out, uh, could definitely see him missing here. And that would get Mercus Sasser, Ivy in the starting lineup pretty much could uh, expect Duran back after um, the scratch there. Uh, so he should be, we get a late Q tag. Uh, we had a Chemezi Metu over that was really sharp um, after counting two, uh, two. So, you know, we see a lot of teams like, um, you know, D, like they'll make them inactive. We've been watching for inactives. The Detroit Pistons made four mistakes uh, on Tucson and Wilma's earlier time. He had four DMP CDs, which count uh, to his game count. So he was ineligible to play. That's a screw up there. They certainly could use them. We capitalized on that and played a Chemezi Metu over eight and a half points. That was really good bet on our part. Uh, he'll play a lot. Uh, I think Troy Brown could play a lot. They're getting pretty thin. Uh, Cade could play a little bit smaller. We still got Jalen Noel. He's still on his 10 day. He's still got a few games left. I think he, I don't know what the, I'll figure it out when we get there, but uh, I'm pretty sure he has today. Uh, and then we'll see about the weekend once we get the game counts. But um, yeah, could feel a little bit of squeeze. Obviously, Cade, I don't have a great read on it. Uh, but when he does play, he plays full. Uh, so. Um, maybe we'll see how um, the Sixers treat it. They've got a lot of Q tags, but um, could be, you know, could be a decent amount of minutes. There's not too much left for them to to tank on here. Cool. On the 76ers side, Robert Covington, the only out tag here. Uh, so the big news is DeAnthony Melton upgraded to a questionable tag, which is nice to see. But he joins uh, uh, the pretty much the rest of the starting lineup here for Philly with questionable tags. Joel Embiid, Tyrese Maxey, Tobias Harris, and Kyle Lowry are all listed questionable it is an island game for both teams here philly does not play again till friday uh their last three games tonight against detroit then they play orlando on friday and close the season with brooklyn on sunday so pretty favorable matchups here for the sixers any any leans here on the questionable tags or insight on philly uh one of our favorite teams to discuss here yeah. on the on the injury show yeah, we don't even know the starting lineup when we get the starting lineup with Philly anymore. <laughs> uh, we saw over the weekend, they said they were going to start Buddy Heald and the Spurs beats who were there. We're like, oh, no, look, there's Nick Batum starting. When we didn't even, like, so but Batum, like, sits back to back. So we're like, oh, my God. We had to, like, hedge his minutes that they, you know, fake active him and make him an inbounder. Um, which, by the way, he had a hell of an inbound pass uh, to uh, Tyrese Maxey down the stretch. Uh, shout to Batum. But, um, yeah, so I don't know, man. Like, they're going to probably sit someone. Again, they're rested. But these are all management tags. Um, we capped D'Anthony Melton. This is an aggravation injury, perhaps returning too soon. So he went 16 minutes when he returned. I think there's no chance he gets to that. I think he's going to be, like, range of, like, eight minutes, one rotation, and done to, like, maybe two of those. So 16. So we landed at 13 minutes uh, for him. And then... Yeah, um, you know, Embiid should be back. You know, as you mentioned, this was clearly a back-to-back -back sit for him. Fortunate enough to get the win. Thanks to uh, Tyrese Maxey going for 52. Just an impressive game for him. Locked up his most improved player of the year award. He's like 13, 1400 minus now. But um, yeah, um, Paul Reed would go back to the bench. That would cut out Mo Bamba mostly. Uh, they did close small. Um, with Paul Reed fouling out, they went with the small ball lineup uh, to close out. So, um, which actually benefited Ricky Council, who I want to talk about really quick. Awesome game down the stretch. Close had one of the best passes of the weekend. Kick out to Batum, one of the biggest shots of the game. Uh, Nick Nurse called it a dagger. He is not playoff eligible. He is on a two way deal. Hmm. So do they do they want to get a longer look at him? I don't know. So we gave him some minutes at the expensive campaign. A little bit of buddy. I think that they want to look at this guy, man. He you know again you're playing overtime in a game you had to get with a lot of your you know with your best player out. And obviously Maxi was the star, but you can make a case that Ricky Council was like their second or third most important player to getting this win. So I think he's earned it and they want to get tape. You know, they have to make a decision if they want to have him on their playoff roster. Who would that be at the expense of? Maybe campaign. I don't know. Maybe KJ Martin. I don't know. Um, but bottom line is here. I think that they want to look at Ricky Council if you're going to play him in a big, big game like that in overtime that you they clearly, you know, have, have that he has their attention. 
Yeah, that makes sense to me. That that pass was incredible at the end of the game there, left-handed uh, out, out of the lane to a wide-open three-point shooter. So great rookie council play there. And, and Detroit, or excuse me, Philly, uh, it looks like the, the books are expecting the big guys to play here as, as mm-hmm. the Sixers are 15.5-point favorites, one of the biggest favorites of the night. All right, let's move along to the Indiana Pacers at Toronto Raptors. Front end of the back-to-back here for Toronto. Island game here for the Pacers. Uh, pretty clean injury report on Indy side. Just ben- Benedict Matherin listed out still. And then uh, we get the classic three G League questionable tags here for Indy that don't really factor in. So any news and notes here on the Pacers as they head across the border to Toronto? No, just we saw Mega Neesmith, Mega Miles Turner. Miles Turner subbing in with Bam. Very unusual to get that. I mean, an awesome game for Miles Turner, um, just from uh, overall impact, especially in the first half defensively. Uh, really, really good game from him. And yeah, R- Ricardo said this time of year they need their best players to play great. We've, you know, it's a break spread, but they're off till Friday. They're, you know, them and the Sixers and other teams, they're only playing on the big days. Um, everyone's playing on the big days, but some teams are playing Thursday and Wednesday. But um, yeah, so. We went decent on minutes. We, you know, we went, I think we landed at 33 uh, for Halliburton. And then we gave Neesmith, who was uh, really running bad. Um, we, we had a big debate over the weekend on where to put Neesmith's minutes. And I was like, hey, man, he's, they're going to need to play him off for Jimmy. And he played freaking 40, hit two big free throws uh, down the stretch. So, yeah, um, yeah, I think they're going to play a lot. Obviously, this matchup is insanely good. Raptors love to run. You know, the Pacers love to run. Uh, really weak rim defense as well. So, And the, the Pacers are number one in rim points. This could be just a freaking score fest. Uh, and if the Raptors can keep it close, we'll talk about them in a second. This probably has the biggest upside of the slate uh, if this game is close. Yeah, that makes sense. Currently sitting at the highest total of the night, 239 and a half, only one other game above 230. So uh, your intuition is right there. This should be a, a solid game to target for DFS. On the Raptors side, uh, some you should, should open up because Emmanuel quickly is listed out with rest. Uh, we have Gary Trent listed available here. And then Grady Dick, questionable with a groin contusion. Uh, the jokes write themselves yeah. with that one. <laughs> and then uh, Scotty Barnes, Yaka Pertle, Jonte Porter, DJ Carton, and Chris Boucher remain out. So uh, my number one question to you is who do you expect to start for Emmanuel quickly? And then any other news and notes on the Raptors? Yeah. One of the tougher, who's going to start questions of the day, the Grizzlies are up there. We'll get there. I think they start Bruce Brown. I think that they have enough handling with RJ Barrett who handles a ton. So it's going to be a lot of art, a lot of RJ on the ball, a uh, little bit of Trent on the ball, not much. And then a lot of Bruce on the ball. Uh, we know Bruce is capable ball handler. You do need additional defense. So I think Bruce, probably gonna bruce or trent probably grading halliburton so i think that makes sense gives them like a little bit more wingy look um they could kind of play different ways and i don't know i just don't think javon freeman liberty's done enough to earn minutes so it was just kind of a way to push his minutes down so i think we landed at 20 uh for freeman liberty with a little bit of garbage equity baked in so uh again uh, rj possibly on point bruce brown uh in the backcourt gary trent on the wing uh, Oche Akbaji would be starting, and then obviously Kelly Linick, who played a lot over the weekend in the nuttiest of nut matchups against the Wizards. So those starting guys, we'll see how the bench shakes out. Uh, if they play Malik Williams, he's still eligible on his 10-day. They've been playing Gary, uh, Garrett Temple at center. Um, it's been pretty funny uh, to see that. And then, you know, th- there's been talk about playing uh, Jalen McDaniels more. And, uh, and then Grady Dick did get hurt, and um, after the game, Dark Rose said he was, like, not capable of playing so as you mentioned the the groin injury for dick is just it's kind of funny hopefully he's okay but um but yeah so that's kind of where we're at but we could and again and as darko said like you know all those losses they're they're like almost safe like if they win two more then they may be in trouble i'd say the say the grizzlies sneak a win out but they're pretty safe in six and we saw that they're you know not going to really tank anymore that they've kind of done the damage quickly 36 pair 36 should mention probably getting rj off tomorrow i think there'll be you know one on one off uh as how i would approach it but again um if this game's close i think you're going to get a lot of minutes and not a lot of shenanigans i think the, the raptors kind of want to reward the team for dealing with that freaking 15 game losing streak yeah awesome sounds good all right let's head to one of the biggest games on paper of the night boston celtics at milwaukee bucks interested to see how boston plays this as they've kind Mm -hmm. of been resting their starters a little bit the last few games and uh it's probably a game where they don't really want to show milwaukee much in terms of Mm -hmm. scheme or you know what what they're thinking matchup wise so interested to see how this one plays out but it is a front end of a back-to-back year for milwaukee island game for boston on the celtic side both al horford and chris tops porzingis are listed questionable along with a few g league out tags we do have the horford 
big toe sprain here. So uh, <laughs> make make great toes or make toes great again. Uh, and then KP is listed with the with the right hamstring management here. So any insight on on Horford or Porzingis? I would probably expect one to sit, but yeah. just curious your read in a in a you know again big matchup on paper against the Bucks. Yeah, one or both are sitting. Like they're clearly they've got nothing to play for, and you can make a case they're incentivized to lose. Uh, pulling up the standings here. I mean, as bad as Milwaukee's been, and I know everyone's going to want to pile on. I mean, you lose to the Wizards, Raptors, tanking Grizzlies, and then uh, to the Knicks. Like that, that's that's as bad as it gets, man. Like one of the worst weeks you could ask for. As bad as that, as bad as that is, do you really want to risk them being on your side of the bracket? Like, I think that the Celtics would probably rather have them in the two three, and then you know maybe someone else. I, I don't know. I think that's how most teams should feel. They do have a lot of firepower, and I expect them to get it right. They're banged up, though, man. We saw Middleton get popped in the mouth. Um, apparently, had to get surgery according to Doc Rivers. Giannis playing through this hamstring. Dame coming off the groin. Who's been full? Uh, I was wrong on that, man. Uh, I thought Dame, who's had a history of groin injuries, would be capped. He is full uh, already. Getting ahead of myself a little bit. But with the Celtics, my point is here. We dinged them, man. Uh, I think they keep it down. I think that they may try to play other guys. And this game means nothing to them. And as I mentioned, like they should try to lose it. Um uh, if they wanted to kind of maximize their playoff chances. So again, multiple people sitting. I don't like maybe Xavier Tillman starts. I think that then, then probably throw him um, uh, on Giannis or something to that effect. Um, but yeah, they've been playing Tillman a pretty good bit. Cool. Sounds good. On the Bucks side, you, you teased it a little bit, uh, but Patrick Beverly and Chris Middleton listed probable here. Middleton listed with a quad injury after leaving that last game with the mouth injury. So I thought that was notable that he's not even listed with the mouth issue. So should be good mm. to go here, listed probable. And then we have the Giannis Q-tag here with the hamstring tendinopathy. Uh, there was a report before last game that they were going to monitor Giannis's minutes down the stretch. Mm -hmm. And he proceeded to play 38 and a half <laughs> while sitting like the last minute, minute and a half for yeah. a blowout there. So Giannis continues to rack up the big minutes as they cannot win a game here. But uh, any thoughts on Giannis playing tonight and, and overall thoughts on the box as you're hitting on? Yeah. Back to back. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he sits, you know, just like you're, and you're, you're playing Orlando tomorrow and that game is more important, right? You're vying mm -hmm. for positioning with them. So like we have him in, we have him full, but there's definitely a chance he sits for sure. Cause I mean, he's, he's hurting. Uh, we saw the quote from doc rivers last week. Uh, you know, we asked about Giannis possibly coming out. He said, he talked to the trainers about taking him out. Uh, he said, quote, I have eyes. We saw Giannis grabbing his hamstring. He ain't right, man. So, um, that's, that's a tall ask, um, to ask for him to play. And again, you know, got hashtag biggest game of the year vibes, uh, against Orlando tomorrow. So expecting him in, wouldn't be surprised if he sits, uh, it would be Jay Crowder likely picking up the start if he did miss. And then as you, as I mentioned, Dame's getting all the minutes, Middleton's been, should be fine. You know, we've seen him hit mid thirties, uh, and then Mike Beasley's kind of run bad, had some foul trouble, pretty much throwing that out. He should be back to normal minutes wise. Cool. Let's head to another Eastern Conference matchup with some playoff seating at stake here. The Miami Heat at Atlanta Hawks. It's the front end of a back-to-back -back for both teams here. On the Heat side, we have Josh Richardson and Duncan Robinson listed out. Duncan Robinson listed out again with that lower back issue that caused him to miss a couple mm -hmm. weeks in March, I believe. Uh, and he said today he's without a timetable for return. So Duncan Robinson, I think, kind of questionable now for the play, even the return for mm -hmm. the playoffs. A um, lot of lot of other tags here as well, though. Bam Adebayo, Nikola Jovic, and Kevin Love listed probable, and then Terry Rozier listed questionable with the neck issue that he played through last mm -hmm. game, and subsequently said he probably shouldn't have played and, and was a detriment to the team afterwards. So, uh, in place of Duncan Robinson, I think we're pretty locked in on Tyler Hero starting. But curious mm -hmm. your thoughts on t on Terry Rozier, and if he were to miss, who you expect to fill his role in the starting lineup? Yeah, here's I think here is starting regardless. Uh, and it's just a matter of like how else everything's going to shake out. Uh, as you mentioned, on top of the Rozier comments, uh, Eric Spolster was like was saying, "Hey, yeah, we appreciated him trying. We saw Duncan get cut. Uh, he did he did cup in come in for a cup of coffee late for a three point possession. So uh, it was it was it's pretty safe to say it was bothering him, and that kind of boosted uh, Jovic's minutes a little bit. So, uh, but yeah, Rozier, I don't know, man. They it they might sit him again here. Uh, I do agree that Tyler here is starting regardless. And then if Rozier did miss, then um, I mean, maybe they go to uh, Caleb, maybe they go to Highsmith or something funky. Um, not, not too, too sure, but this is a, uh, you know, they, they maybe they go to Dewan, uh, who they haven't really been playing a lot, but I think hero 
Um, cause they're going to want to put someone on Dejounte, Right. And like, if you're going to start with that Rogier, you're not, you're not going to put hero on him. Maybe mm-hmm. you put Jimmy on him. So I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if they like pulled the out and like put him on Dejounte. And that's if, you know, that's if they didn't want to, um, didn't have Rogier or somebody just cause they need somebody to guard uh, Dejounte in the spot. Right. Just looking at the Miami schedule for this week tonight, they obviously have the Hawks and then tomorrow uh, they have Dallas at home and an ESPN game. And then they close the season on Friday and Sunday with two games against the Raptors. So certainly tonight and tomorrow, a little bit tougher matchups uh, compared to what the Raptors are tossing out these days. So interesting to see if they try and push Rozier through these couple games again, as they try to, you know, try and get out of this play on game. It's not looking great after their, their loss. Um, last week to the Pacers, but still, still a chance if they, if they went out here. Yeah. On the I'll, Hawks. Add, I will, I'll just add really quick. I wouldn't be so like, if mm-hmm. you're inserting Tyler hero into the first unit, we see Spolster like do wholesale changes. So maybe mm-hmm. they pull out Jovic, put in high Smith. Again, you need the on-ball defense there. So yeah, kind of just red alert um, with this whole situation. Cause again, Duncan's going to be out for a while. You, you, they're they're going to need to make major changes uh, to this rotation now. Cool. On the Hawks side, pretty straightforward injury report here with just out tags. Trey Young, Anyeka Kongwu, Seth Lundy, AJ Griffin, and Sadiq Bey are all outs. We did get the report that Trey Young uh, is returning to basketball activities, so potentially a chance to return Mm -hmm. if if the Hawks make a run in the playoffs at all. But any news and notes here for Atlanta? Yeah, just Trey Young uh, cleared. I expected him to be full go for when they play Chicago in the 9-10 game next week. I expect him to probably get a game in here before then. Uh, He's been keeping his conditioning up, all that stuff. So uh, good to go, but again, out today. So expecting pretty strong minutes here. I think that they're trying to get that nine spot uh, over Chicago. We've seen pretty strong minutes here. Obviously, got smoked by Denver. I think they were on a b- back into a back to back that hurt them. Uh, but anyways, yeah, uh, really strong minutes here. Matchup sucks uh, in um, Miami. Spectacular transition defense and re- rim defense. So uh, really tough matchup uh, here for um, you know the course field uh, of the NBA. It's uh, about as tough as it gets. It's uh, you know this is bringing in. Um, who uh Clayton Kershaw, you know, playing playing at cores. You know, you may not you may not get as much uh as, as many runs on the board. For sure. Love it. All right, let's head to another Eastern Conference matchup. New York Knicks at Chicago Bulls. Island game for both teams here. On the Knicks side, we just have Julius Randle listed out as OG Ananobi is officially back and got up to uh, close to 39 minutes the other night. So pretty much full go there. And then Bojan Bogdanovich is listed probable with the left wrist sprain. So any news and notes here for the Knicks? And also, uh, Quentin Grimes is ruled out for <laughs> the Pistons. Um, sorry, kidding, kidding aside. Um, yeah, so not much to add, man. The minutes could be strong. They're trying to get it all here. I don't really have too much to say. Mitch kind of hanging around the 20 minutes. Uh, Brunson, killer, killer game, man. Uh, 43 free throws, everything. He's just, um, it, I'm, I've got, I took a lot of notes on Doc's presser, like, cause he's like, he like basically spilled the beans on how they're going to guard uh, Brunson if they play him in the first round. So unless he was lying, which I don't think he was cause he's pretty pissed. Um, but yeah, you know, kind of where we're at, we know what, we know what we're getting. Uh, OG full, uh, Hartenstein's still locking it down. They're splitting the center minutes straight. So we, we kind of know what we're getting with this, with this New York team. Sweet. On the Bulls side, we have Lonzo Ball, Zach Levine, Julian Phillips, and Patrick Williams still out there. And then Kobe White is listed probably with an ankle sprain uh, that he left mid-game in over the weekend. So good to see him listed probable here. And then a couple questionable tags on Io DeSumo and Alex Caruso. So a lot going on in the backcourt here for Chicago. Any insight on Io and Caruso here tonight and any other news and notes on the Bulls? Yeah, Cruz is just this thing's bothering him. He's listed to management tag. He'll be pretty much good to go. Uh, Io didn't see what happened. I just did some Twitter searching and didn't find much. So I think he's going to be fine. Um, yeah, not a back to back. So they're, they're playing again on Thursday. So don't really have too much to add. Uh, Kobe's been, eh, you know, that's been a bit, a bit disappointing. The matchups haven't been that great, but the minutes are there. So maybe he pops around. And then Javante Green, we saw him start. Uh, for Caruso, who you know missed the last game, um, so yeah, this is kind of a thing that just can't go away. Um, I forget if it was back to back, but I think Caruso's probably back. If he's out, Javante's starting, man. Like he's been really, really good uh, in the first unit, been scoring a bunch. Um, you know, pro- providing the the stocks, he's been pretty effective. Uh, Mints didn't get up there. Uh, they did kind of have a good little second unit run uh, with Tory Craig, led by Demar Derozan uh, and Drummond. They did run some overlap as well, so that could be something that they would look at against a team that's very big uh, and mm-hmm. you know the team that rebounds the ball really well. So I think we'd be looking at some drum and overlap in the spot. Yeah, that if, makes if sense. If out. Yep, sounds good. All right, let's move along to Orlando Magic at Houston Rockets. It's the front end of a back-to-back 
for Orlando. And as we mentioned, they play Milwaukee tomorrow in a massive game standings wise. Orlando is currently only one game back of Milwaukee mm -hmm. for the two seeds. So uh, a couple questionable tags here on the Orlando side with Jonathan, uh, Jonathan Isaac listed Q with back spasms and then Franz Wagner questionable with a right ankle sprain. Uh, both guys left this game against the Bulls mm -hmm. that you are showing. So any insight here on Isaac and Wagner as they uh, head into Houston tonight. Again, massive matchup at Milwaukee tomorrow for the Eastern Conference standings. Yeah, tough Orlando schedule. You know, we're rooting for our magic to to beat the Heat in the standings. Um, the, their, their schedule is about as hard as it gets for, for teams vying for positioning. So, um, but yeah, Franz rolled his ankle pretty good. Got an x-ray on it, negative. Uh, doesn't sound good. Uh, so we know he's tough though. He's played, he plays through a lot of stuff. He, you know, had an ankle injury, what his rookie season that cut him down to end his year. Um, it, I don't think it looked that bad, but, um, definitely a chance he sits. If they did sit him, I think they would go multi-guard. I think they would just kind of slide Gary Harris to the three and then bring in Marco Fultz. who has been playing a little bit better lately, uh, and go that route. Uh, and then Jonathan Isaac. Yeah. Back injury again. This is not good for him, man. You know, we saw him up his minutes and this is what happens. And we talked about this, you know, a couple uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, we were, we were talking about up in Isaac's minutes for the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And I was saying, like, yeah, can you really do that? Like, you up his minutes, you're kind of playing with fire here. So, um, yeah, I think that these, I think they got to sit him. So that would mean, you know, uh, get more of a, may lose one of the the Wagner boys, maybe get another one uh, there. So, but um, yeah, definitely some chance that uh, Franz miss. And then, as you mentioned, you know, you don't, you want to, you want to have Franz tomorrow uh, for mm -hmm. sure. So I think that, I think he's like a teensy bit closer to doubtful, but don't have much to go on. And he's a tough dude. Cool. Cool. Yeah, that all sounds good to me. On the Rockets side, we have Amen Thompson listed available here after his ejection last game. And then Tari Eason, Alperin Shingun, Jay Sean Tate, and Steven Adams out. Any news and notes for the Rockets tonight? No, I think we can just move on. We're, we're running behind, so I think we just skip Sweet. it. I don't really have too much to add. Sweet. Next game to attack is the Sacramento Kings at Oklahoma City Thunder. Front end of the back-to-back -back for OKC. They get the Spurs tomorrow. Uh, on the Kings side, we have Kevin Herter and Malik Monk remain out. And then Keegan Murray popped up with a questionable tag for left calf soreness. He's been playing a ton uh, without Herter mm -hmm. and Monk. So do you think this is a, le a legitimate Q tag, or what are you expecting here for Keegan and any other news and notes on the Kings? Yeah, I got dinged up in the last game. Uh, played through it for a bit. So I think he's going to be in there. Again, like they've got no margin of error. They're at risk of falling to down to the 9-10 game for sure. So, yeah, uh, big minutes coming here. We've seen huge minute ceilings at De'Aaron Fox lately. Uh, so there could be some some uh, fantasy goodness uh, from him. And then, yeah, everything else is the same. Uh, Harrison Barnes still gets cratered. He has had Trey Lyles eating in his minutes there. So we went pretty strong on the starters. Well, I guess I should say Fox, Keegan, and Sabonis. Um, didn't on Barnes because Trey Lyles could cut him down. So... Uh, and they do mm -hmm. have some three guard lineups. They're comfortable playing that three guard lineup um, as well. So, yeah, fast paced game. You know, if uh, but OKC's defense could be get. They actually struggled quite a bit in the uh, the time without J Dub and SGA. Uh, we know where to get SGA back. We'll get to this in a second. So not as great as you would think um, for you know overall upside. Obviously, they're playing fast. So if, if shots are falling, this could still be a really really good game for teams who are highly motivated. So you could get a close game fast. Um, and elevated minutes for motivation. So pretty good game environment. For sure. On the Thunder side, we have Gordon Hayward listed out here with left posterior tibialis uh, along with a few G leaguers. I was looking at the Hayward injury because I didn't really know what that was right away. And it's it's like a tendon that kind of is right around the Achilles. You know, it's like lower calf that connects the leg to the foot. So not great news there for Gordon Hayward uh, after he left that game against the Pacers. After drawing the start, he remains out. Uh, J-Dub, Jalen Williams listed questionable here with the left ankle sprain. He was also questionable last game and did not suit up. So what are you thinking here for J-Dub's chances of playing tonight? Yeah, pure pain on the Hayward injury. We had an over on him, missed it by a point after he was one away in the first half. Uh, but yeah, I think J-Dub's good. That ankle injury didn't look bad. Uh, stepped on the ref's foot uh, in the New York game on Sunday, which uh, Dink attended. So would expect him to start and then you know have him back in the full go situation. If he didn't, I mean, I don't know how they keep Aaron Wiggins out of, out of the mix. Uh, he played freaking great, 26 points, six steals, five dimes, pretty, pretty much won the game. Um, you know, Isaiah Joe hit some shots and all that, but um, 
I mean, Aaron Wiggins was spectacular uh, in this one. So uh, Chet, too. Chet made some plays. But, uh, yeah, so I think that he would start if they didn't have uh, J-Dub. But I think J-Dub's back. Uh, there was not much concern uh, on the ankle injury. So I think it seems like he's got a good chance. Uh, Mark Dagnall talked about a lot of guys gaining confidence uh, with the SGA J-Dub guys being out. And, again, they are still fun fighting for the one spot. Um, going to be tough for sure. But I think they're going to be going pretty strong here. And then should also note – um, one, this is a back to back, so take it with a grain of salt. But Mark Dagnall said they want to use this week to make sure conditioning's really, really strong. They know they're going to be upping minutes in the playoffs. Uh, so we, we see this all the time, right? We have SGA, I think, at 39 and a half. We would never project SGA at 39. And That's for our best ball rankings. Today we mm-hmm. don't, but I'm saying for our best ball rankings. So, like, he wants to kind of get him up there. So keep an eye on that. Maybe they play SGA max today and, like, sit him tomorrow. Um, but just a quad thing. He had suffered this injury on. March 20th and was playing through it for a little bit. And they sat him down for a few games and then did sneak in that New York game uh, for Dink. Um, that's why I think, I think he wanted to, sh- I wanted to show up for Dink um, <laughs> anyways. But yeah, I think that mostly covers it, but I'm expecting J-Dub and not hundred percent sure that did go through, did go through shoot around. So that's a good sign. Okay, cool. Let's head to Mike Gallagher, bad basketball game of the night, the San Antonio Spurs at Memphis Grizzlies. It's the front end of a back-to-back here for both teams, and the injury report is littered with out tags on both sides. On the Spurs, we have Devin Vassell, Jeremy Sohan, Keldon Johnson, Jetty Osmond, Charles Bassey, and Dominic Barlow all listed out. Uh, The G-Leaguers are available here, so some potential depth for the Spurs, but any news and notes here other than just massive, massive Wemby game and any other things uh, you want to hit on, on the Spurs side. Yeah. Keldon aggravated his foot, pops it after the game. So not great. Uh, so that should get Sanju Mamakamish Bailey in the first unit. Uh, Trey Jones playing a lot. Obviously 49 was double overtime aided, but that's still a ton uh, mm-hmm. of regulation minutes. 43 for Wemby. That's a, a really good sign. I think we landed at 33 minutes for him. Could certainly see him beating it. Obviously, a team that has no talent on the other end. We'll get to that in a second. So, yeah, I feel pretty good about these minutes. Uh, we saw a lot of Devontae Graham. They went kind of small um, in this game. Uh, basically closed uh, with Trey, Malachi Branham, uh, Champagne, uh, and Wemby. Big shot from Champagne uh, late in the game, but not not enough. Uh, as I'm, I used to root for the Sixers all the time. I used to love writing about them. Now that all their injury shenanigans, uh, I, I inherently am rooting against them uh, for what what the amount of stress they've caused in my life the last couple of years. Um, but anyways, yeah, um, potentially a good spot. I, you know, there's like a lot of like non NBA players on the other side, uh, so this could be a pretty good spot for the Spurs. Yeah, the Grizzlies side is again just it's it's laughable how many players they have out here. Uh, so mm-hmm. let's get into it. Santi Aldama, Desmond Bain, Jaron Jackson Jr., Luke Kennard, John Conchar, John Morant, Derek Rose, Marcus Smart, Yuta Watnabi, Vince Williams, and Zai- Zaire Williams all out. And then mm-hmm. Jake Laravia and Lamar Stevens are listed doubtful here. So uh, on the Memphis on the on the two way or the ten day contract side, uh, Mazina Pereira his 10 day contract expired and they have not announced a new one yet. So we are expecting him not to play. And then they signed Jack white to a 10 day contract today. So he should be in there. I believe that gets them up to nine players active tonight. Uh, most, you know, pretty much G league rotation players, as you alluded to any other news and notes here on the Grizz. Yeah. So I think uh, Jack white's going to start out of the gate. Um, they need size and they need a little bit of shooting. He kind of provides that. So I'm expecting, uh, him to start uh, with Scotty Goodwin, Trey Jemison, and Gigi Jackson. We've seen Gigi Jackson's minutes be real light, uh, but that was garbage time related. So he could play a lot. We landed at 35 minutes for him. Uh, and then Xavier Simpson, Brandon Clark, and Timmy Allen uh, will cover the bench. I think that's eight unless I'm missing someone. Yeah, um, counting our minutes page. I, I count eight now as yeah, well. So, okay, okay. so currently eight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. so we got pretty strong minutes here. I think everyone's like 26 or more. I think Timmy Allen's our low man. He's kind of a 2-3 two, uh, two, combo um, there. So, uh, yeah, could be a lot of Jemison minutes. Obviously, you know, against Wemby down there, not the easiest of matchups uh, for him. But uh, yeah, this is a, you know, pretty good spot for the guards. We know we love to play guards. Uh, we saw what Tyrese Maxey did. Um, you know, guards could fill it up. So, Scotty Pippen's been real hot. Um, definitely viable. Jordan Goodwin playing a pretty good bet. Um, probably can't go there on Xavier Simpson, but you know, definitely a really good guard spot uh, against the Spurs, who are turnover prone, play pretty fast, uh, and all that stuff. So yeah, you know, bad basketball game of the night. They only got eight guys, tight spread. Uh, could get a lot of a lot of fantasy goodness in this one. 
This is what Gallagher's dreams are made of right yeah. here. Uh, <laughs> let's head to the Washington Wizards at Minnesota Timberwolves, front end of back-to-back here for Minnesota. Uh, on the Wizards' side, a uh, handful of out tags here with Marvin mm-hmm. Bagley, Tyus Jones, Landry Shamit, and Bilal Koulibaly all listed out, and then a few questionable tags as well. Pretty much the entire front court here for the Wizards listed mm-hmm. questionable as Kyle Kuzma, Tristan Vukcevic, Rashawn Holmes, Anthony Gill, and Johnny Davis all listed questionable. So with Marvin Bagley out uh, and then all these four, you know, Q tags on Kuzma, Vukcevic, Holmes, and Gill, what are you thinking happens for the Wizards tonight? Obviously playing a big team in the Wolves, you know, they could use some of those front court bodies. What are you thinking here for Washington? Yeah, don't have a great read. We've seen Kyle Kuzma miss some games here and there. This is not back to back. Um, They might just sit him to tank. You know, they've got a little bit of a window to catch the Spurs. Um, If they can, I don't, think they're going to but maybe they do tank it i think there's no reason to uh shouldn't i think one thing that makes me more likely to think that kyle kuzma is going to sit was patrick baldwin played pretty well uh double double uh there was some comments of brian keith saying that he like kind of kept him in the game uh unprompted comments too so my my someone's sitting like i don't know who or how long we saw rashawn holmes get you know cue out cue out cue out I think he's done for the, like, I think if they, they're only going to play him if they need to play him. I think they just want to play uh, Tristan Vucevic uh, a decent bit here. So, yeah. um, did get dinged well, up in the last game. His minute, go ahead. Yeah. He's sorry to, too, sorry so. to interrupt, but uh, on the, um, on the 1230 or on the 1230 report, our 230 injury report, uh, 1230 Mountain Time, we, we did we get clarity here on the Wizards. So, Anthony Gill is listed probable, Beautiful. Johnny Davis available, Rashawn Holmes out, Kyle Kuzma out, Tristan Vucevic out. So, um, it looks like it'll be, Eugene Omer Yuri and Anthony Gill as the primary front court guys uh, yeah. for the Wizards, along with Patrick Baldwin Jr. As you were talking Baldwin's about, Baldwin's going to start. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Baldwin's going to start. So, yeah, we got Keegan in as well. That's nice. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, and uh, Dame Dame Lillard getting the, the probable tag. Okay. Uh, okay. So we know we're going to get. Uh, and did, did we get John Davis probable? Yeah, he's available. listed yep. okay. available. Okay, cool. So I think we know pool for sure, Denny for sure, Kisper for sure. And then you said it was Gil Gil out. Gil is probable. So I would expect Gil's, him to Okay, start so Gil's then. starting. Yep. Yeah. So I would say, yep. Um pool for kill pool it'd be pool, Kisper, Denny, Patrick Baldwin for me, and then Gil. I would expect them to start uh Johnny off the bench, Butler off the bench. Justin Champagne off the bench, Omi Yuri off the bench. Uh, that would, and then Jules, Jules Bernard, those guys. That's, I feel pretty good. That's how it's going to go. So, yeah, tough cool. to, uh, tough. I'm glad we got that report, though. That's, uh, that's nice. Yeah, definitely. Tough that helps track. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. On yeah, the we, obviously, side, we, obviously, we couldn't have known that. We're, we're busy. So don't feel bad. Yeah. About it. <laughs> on the, on the Wolves, on the Wolves side, clean injury report here, just with Carl Anthony Towns and Jalen Clark listed out. So pretty much full, the full strength squad that we've seen without Towns the last, few weeks any any news and notes here to add on the wolves uh no uh they are i uh the only note is they are 17 point favorites and they get denver tomorrow in a biggest game of the year situation so Mm -hmm. uh was expecting some q tags honestly um to manage keep an eye on i guess but feel feel pretty good they're gonna gonna you know if they get a chance to cut minutes they're gonna do it for sure. All right, let's head to that that Denver Nuggets game at Utah Jazz. Front end of the back-to-back here for Denver. And as you just mentioned, they host the Wolves tomorrow, uh, which could very well determine the number one seed in the West. So massive, massive game tomorrow for both the Nuggets and the Wolves. On the Nuggets injury report, we have Contavious Caldwell-Pope, Nikola Jokic, Jamal Murray, Michael Porter Jr., and Julian Strother, all listed probable. The big tag here is Aaron Gordon, listed questionable with the right foot strain. So uh, my inclination would be that Gordon sits tonight and plays tomorrow against the Wolves, mm-hmm. but any insight here on Gordon and his foot strain listing? Yeah, I think he's going to sit. Uh, again, why even bother? Your huge favorites against Utah, something that's been bothering him, something that he needs to manage. We've seen him get listed with Achilles stuff here and there, so it feels like he's going to sit. That Jamal P tag scares me. Uh, he's gonna, according to Michael Malone, he's going to be on a minutes limit for the rest of the regular season. Uh, he said that they, you know, that they weren't. Uh, you know, we see twenty. That was garbage time. Like I, I think if if he w- if this game was close, I think he'd be like twenty seven. So that's kind of where we landed. Uh, and I don't think they're going to ramp him. I think he's going to be like thirty max the rest of the way. 
uh, to me because this is the thing that's been bothering him. They want to make sure he's right for the playoffs. So I, I don't. I'm surprised he's not sitting today and then mm-hmm. playing tomorrow in a pretty big game. So like I said, I would not be, you know, be careful. Like don't be betting, you know, Reggie Jackson <laughs> unders or anything like that. Because um, I, I would again treat that Jamal Murray tag like a Q tag. Um, but yeah, other than that, you know, I think uh, Christian Brown would start again. We saw him get, you know, uh, Aaron Gordon missed the last one. So I think he would miss again uh, and they would go that route. Um, Brown's been playing pretty well uh, overall. Peyton Watson, I wish I had the picture up. Uh, he's got a, a shirt that says P. Watt and like the dare drug letters. And so, and it has the, you know, it said the dare shirt said to keep, to keep kids off drugs. He has to keep points off the board. Uh, I'll have <laughs> to pull that up uh, in a second if uh, if I have a second. For sure. I'll head to the Jazz side if you want to pull that up. The Jazz have a, a lot of out tags here uh, with Jordan Clarkson, John Collins, Chris Dunn, Walker Kessler, and Laurie Markinen all listed out. So plenty of front court names there with Collins, Kessler, and Markinen, and then Clarkson and Dunn in the backcourt. We've seen the Jazz do some wonky stuff with their rotation over the last few games. So any insight here or security kind of on, on who you feel best about playing the most for the jazz tonight and any other news and notes you want to cover there for Utah? Uh, no, just, uh, we got a little bit of a surprise uh, over the weekend. Uh, we felt pretty good that, you know, Taylor Horn Tucker was going to get cut, uh, but not cut all the way out because uh, we yeah. had an under on Taylor Horn Tucker uh, and it had to be a void there. So they did mix it up. We saw a big Johnny Juzang game and talked a lot about, you know, the Warriors being a bit vulnerable to shooting. Uh, they lost him a ton early. Um, but yeah, um, expecting this to be pretty much straightforward. Um, your seven lost some minutes to Darius Basley, who played pretty well. Do you think they would need to size here? So I feel pretty good that um, the starting lineup would be the same. We'll see if they tinker in and out. Obviously, Ju Zhang, I think, has earned consistent minutes. He's been probably one of the most promising bench players uh, that they have. Um, so I think he's locked in. We'll see if they shuffle Kyra Lewis, uh, THT, Jason Preston, if there's like a mix and match game going on there. Um, but yeah, I think we can feel pretty good about, you know, most of these guys, uh, we did get the Will Hardy rage stuff last week. What was six minutes on some guys, uh, overall, we had uh, some unders that were, were quite nice because of that. But, um, yeah, again, there's no, can't feel, can't have too, too much confidence, um, in these guys. And then big spread doesn't help your case for the guys who are usually consistent. For sure. Yeah. The jazz been, been doing some crazy stuff in the back end of the rotation there. So we feel decent about the starters, but the bench is always a little bit of a mystery uh, for us. So mm-hmm. kind of tread with caution there a little bit. Uh, le- next game on the slate, another massive game tonight in terms of playoff seating and positioning the golden state warriors at Los Angeles Lakers. It's an Island game for both teams here. The warriors are one and a half games back of the Lakers, but just one back in the loss column as they have one more game than the Lakers this week. So pretty, pretty decent chance for the Warriors to pick up a game here on the Lakers. Their injury report is relatively straightforward. Just Dario Saric listed mm-hmm. out and then Andrew Wiggins and Gary Payton, the second listed probable. So any no- news and notes here on the Warriors and hashtag biggest game of the year for them. Yeah, that's it. It's the biggest game of the year. We took two overs on Golden State. Um, Steve Kerr says they won. They pretty much have like no chance at the nine seed or better if they lose this game. So I'm expecting a lot. Uh, we're expecting a lot of minutes. Uh, we've got probably our strongest projection on Steph minutes wise. Dre as well, Clay as well. Uh, we took some overs uh, there, uh, and then Steph's you know Steph rested for this game. I think um, he's been off since Friday. He could play a lot. I'm very excited. Uh, about Steph's prospects uh, and then so yeah it'll be Steph Clay um, we think Wiggins should be back in full probable we saw him miss a couple games so he should be back starting I think and I think they're gonna keep Trace in there uh, we did see uh, Jonathan Kaminga return and play really well uh, as well so maybe they get him back in the mix um, but yeah not not quite clear they've been you know winning games uh, with with Trace Jackson Davis we saw the comments from Steve Kerr so Slightly leaning Trace, but could see his minutes getting cut down a little bit. Uh, of Kaminga, who did again play well, yeah, then looks like the minutes limit isn't like too big of a concern. Again, we could get really concentrated minutes. We could see, you know, guys like Looney go completely bye bye. Uh, we could see Gary Payton get cut down, Moody get cut down a lot. Uh, again, this team's not in a back to back and a massive, massive game for them. So we could just see some huge, huge minutes here. Yeah, I would expect Trace Jackson Davis to start and just get some reps on Anthony Davis at first to to let Draymond Green uh, float elsewhere and, and kind of play off the ball a little bit more and hopefully save some minutes for AD down the stretch uh, mm-hmm. as Trace is you know probably unlikely to close I would say but I think still pretty mm-hmm. likely to start tonight with the AD matchup. On the Lakers side, we have Jared Vanderbilt, 
Christian Wood and Jalen Hood Shafino listed out. Gabe Vincent is available here, not listed on the injury report. So he should be in there tonight. And then the classic questionable tags on Anthony Davis and LeBron James. Any concern here over those two, <clears throat> excuse me, in a big game for the Lakers here as well? Yeah, another eye injury for AD. So not treating this like the fake Q. Uh, we saw LeBron, who was listed originally with the ankle thing, uh, got uh, illness that, that dinged him and knocked him out. So tough threes, right? We can, we can never really read those illness things. I would expect him to play. Um, maybe we'd get goggles ant, uh, after another eye injury. We saw the last time it was more severe. There was more reporting on ant the last, uh, AD the last time when it like, when he like couldn't see for a little bit. So keep an eye on that. Um, but again, not fake Q tags could definitely see them missing, but this game is huge for them. So I think if LeBron's like even like remotely healthy and feeling okay, he's going to give it a go and then play a lot. So, but yeah, again, same story. We got really strong minutes on D'Angelo, Austin Reeves, uh, more a little bit more Rui than usual, um, like a minute more. Um, but yeah, um, and then you know, bye bye Cam Reddish, bye bye uh, Max Christie, and those guys. Um, so it could be you know again like just this is probably this the Clippers game is pretty big too, uh, and then yeah, I think those are like the two of the biggest games. So we can get a lot of really strong minutes there. Cool. Let's head to that Clippers game. They will head to Phoenix tonight to take on the Suns. Kawhi Leonard listed out here. Daniel Tice listed questionable. Any insight here on Tice? Does it really matter? Because they could just play yeah. Plumlee as the backup five. Uh, any other, And then any other news and notes on the Clippers? Yeah, really uh, earmuffs uh, for your Cavs who aren't who aren't playing today. But yeah, really nice win for the Clippers. They went, they went with... Uh, Plumley really to close down the stretch. Uh, uh, James Harden didn't play in the fourth. Uh, Tyler asked about that after the game, said he's fine. So they just went away from Harden, who was playing quite poorly, uh, especially on the defensive end. So, yeah, that was a little bit surprised to see Zoo get cut down a little bit uh, in favor of Plumley. And then they went ultra small uh, to close. PJ continues to start. I don't know why. And then he didn't play like at all in the second half, like didn't play in the fourth quarter. Um, and then, yeah, Paul George, man, game winner, 44. You know, I've. I mean, I've written so much. I've covered like Paul George and Zion are two guys. I'm like night after night. Like, okay, these dudes are, these dudes are star star players uh, who are playing just so well compared to where they were early this year. Um, so yeah, Paul George's world. We're just living in it uh, again. I, you know, I was ringing all the alarm bells on Kawhi Leonard and I mean, th those alarm bells are still going off uh, there. So uh, Brandon Ingram, uh, Brandon Ingram, uh, which we kind of know. Okay. Um, yeah. So yeah. Feel pretty good about these minutes. Again, big, 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 big game. So could see a ton of minutes here uh, in Phoenix. And they play each other tomorrow um, in L.A. So uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But, yeah, pr expecting really, really big minutes uh, out of Paul George. Uh, and then, you know, there no one else is safe. Uh, Harden's not safe anymore. Zubat's not safe anymore. Cool. Yeah, just a brutal collapse there from the Cavs. They scored 80 points in the first half and then 38 points in the second half. Just uh, atrocious there on the second night of a back-to-back -back in L.A. But regardless, let's move on to the Suns, who have Yusuf Nurkic listed questionable here with a right ankle sprain. Nothing else super noteworthy here, just Damian Lee listed out. So what are you thinking here on Nurk's chances to play and any other insight here on the Suns tonight against the Clippers? I'm pretty sure he's in, but not 100%. Uh, we saw him close, and the Pelicans went super small on them, and like Nurk kind of got hung out to dry uh, a few times defensively. So um, Vogel was talked about should he have gone small, and like Rosen only played 14 minutes. Like That was a little bit odd there. Um, just a big, big win for the Pelicans and a pretty tough loss for the Suns. Uh, that man, the Suns could have really helped themselves, and just all those tough losses I think are like really hurting them, like losing the Spurs twice. Um, overall, but um, yeah, expecting him in. Obviously, if he didn't start, uh, I think they would probably go to Drew Eubanks, mixing in some bull bull, probably see some Thad Young again. Uh, overall, but again, I think we're going to see maybe 40s out um, of out of Booker, Durant. Beal's been playing great. They put uh, Zion on Beal, and I mean Beal really took it to him. Beal was awesome. Um, we'll talk about the Pelicans in a sec. Cool. Yeah, we've made it. Let's head to the last game of the night. New Orleans Pelicans at Portland Trailblazers. The Pels have Brandon Ingram solicited out and then Najee Marshall listed doubtful here. Uh, Cody Zeller is still available with that face mask tag. So Pels, pretty much the same rotation we've seen without Brandon Ingram uh, the last few weeks and then add in the Najee Marshall doubtful tag. What are you expecting here for the Pels rotation in Portland? Yeah, we actually got an update from them as I was trying to read it. Um, so Dyson Daniels downgraded to questionable, Najee Marshall out. 
Um, mm. And then Brandon Ingram still out according to them. So, yeah, getting a little thin. Obviously, that's a uh, Jose Alvarado should be playing a pretty good bit off the bench. Uh, again, highly motivated team. Uh, they got to get everyone they can get here. So um, Portland, obviously not very good. And, you know, there's blowout risk here, but could see a ton. You know, we saw 42 out of uh, CJ McCollum. Zion's hitting 40 like, all the time now. Uh, again, what a what a game. That was, you know, Willie Green said that was maybe the best game he's ever seen Zion play. I would agree. I, I've, I have not seen Zion make that kind of defensive impact in any game I've seen him. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've been watching a lot. I've been doing a lot of a lot of Zion watching with all my takes lately. Um, but, yeah, just great game from him. And then the headline here was Val Tunis. Um, you know, we talked about this when we were doing minutes. I was like, hey, you know, Joe Val could really get cut down. Uh, I didn't think four minutes down. Um, and then Will Green was asked about it. He was like, hey, this is just what I think is what was best for the team. And, hey, you know, mad props uh, to to do that and, you know, pull out a big win. So a little bit safer, right, against DeAndre Ayton. You know, not as – not as much scoring punch. So I think Val Tunis a little bit more insulated here. Um, and then, um, but yeah, Larry Nance was great. Uh, the playmaking, mm-hmm. they were like doing a lot of short roll stuff with him. He was doing a little like triple handoff. He was awesome. Awesome. So uh, definitely think there's some downside because Larry Nance was just that good. Yeah. Four minutes from Joe Val is, is, is crazy. I mean, for a starting center to only get that four first four minute rotation and then not play the rest of the game is certainly telling interested to see how that plays out tonight, especially with that Dyson Daniels Q tag. He's been one of the main pieces mm-hmm. off the bench for yeah. them. So uh, with Najee Marshall now out and Dyson Daniels questionable, that certainly opens up a little bit more minutes uh, potentially for Joe Val and it's probably would get, you know, Jordan Hawkins in there a little bit more. And then you mentioned Alvarado should probably play a decent bit in this matchup as well as well with Portland, you know, pretty guard heavy at this point. So um, some moving parts there, but I think we have a decent handle on it at this point, Joe Val kind of an, an interesting crux there on, on how to, on how to project uh, the Pels, but uh, we'll have more, hopefully more information as the evening goes along. On the Blazers side, pretty much same injury status we've seen here of late for Portland. Malcolm Brogdon, Tumani Kamara, Shaden Sharp, Anthony Simons, Matisse Teibel, Robert Williams, all listed out. Jeremy Grant, doubtful. I think we can say he's not going to play <clears throat> tonight. Excuse me. And then Ibu Baji listed questionable here. Uh, he's not really in the rotation either. So I think kind of the main question here is on Ashton Haggins, who is one of those guys on a on a two way deal and has limited games remaining. So what, what's your thoughts here on Ashton Haggins potential chance to suit up? Because that would leave the Blazers, I believe, with only nine active if he is not available. Yeah, we are. Uh, I have been. As, as our Slack knows, I am all over the Ashton Haggins inactive watch. Uh, he's got two left, so I think he's sitting again. We gave him a zero, uh, so I think that they'll keep him out, maybe have him for one of those back-to-backs, and then we'll see if they do him on Sunday um, to get him to his last two of the year. So we've been putting him out. We've been on top of that, um, which, you know, again, they don't have any guards if they're not going to play him, mm-hmm. so that's led to massive Banton, Banton minutes. We talked about Scoot Henderson's role really growing here. Um, awful, awful, awful matchup. I think Scoot's going to probably see Herb. Um, so yeah, and then uh, should shut. I mean, they played really well in this game. You know, they had 22 offensive rebounds. Uh, Joe Mazzola said like, "Hey, you know," I was like, "Hey, you know, just box out." Like it was just a clear that Boston just didn't cr- give a crap. Um, mm-hmm. But again, like tight rotation, a lot of minutes. Obviously, DeAndre Aiden's playing a ton. Um, you know, matchups not as bad um, as well. So I think just you know maybe maybe Portland hangs around. Maybe you know, New Orleans takes them lightly, especially if they are short with Dyson Daniels and no Najee Marshall. They're missing defenders, so there could be you know some opportunity here. Uh, and should know Jabari Walker just bored machine lately. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Portland playing super tight, and you mentioned Jabari boarding like crazy, just playing as many minutes almost as possible uh, for them. All right, that will do it. Any closing thoughts before we get out of here, Mike? Pushing uh, no, uh, pushing close pay- to an hour here. Here's Peyton Watson's uh, P Watt shirt that uh, that I mentioned. Uh, nice, it's pretty, pretty beautiful stuff. So, the <laughs> kept to get me one of those. Love it. All right, that will do it for this edition of the Established Run NBA Injury Analysis Show. As always, we ask for your support in promoting this free content by liking this video and subscribing to our YouTube channel. It really does mean a lot to us at ETR to have your support, especially in this free content. It helps. Uh, keep us keep it free for you guys, and uh, we're you know analyzing this four team game massive slate for free is certainly amazing information that Mike is dishing out here. So if you could just go down below and like and subscribe, it really does help us out a lot. Uh, if you have interest in getting access to behind the paywall content, we have plenty of great stuff there as well. Uh, you can head to establishtherun.com 
backslash subscribe dash MBA to get access to all of our packages there. We do have some discounts uh, just for the rest of the season and into the playoffs that will get you through the entire playoffs as well. Uh, if you per purchase a, a rest of the season package with us, um, I, I believe I'll be back with you tomorrow on Wednesday as Drew has an appointment. So we'll be back dissecting mm -hmm. a slate where there are 14 teams on the second night of a back-to-back. -back. So that'll be a fun one for sure as well, but that will do it for us today. Appreciate all you guys listening. Hope it's a good one out there and hopefully we can conquer this 14 game slate. Only two big massive ones left after this one. So have a good one out there. Good luck in all your contests. Peace.